Hi, I'm John Green. Welcome to my salon. This is Mental Floss on YouTube, and this is my glabella, the area between my eyebrows. And that's just the first of many things that you may not have known had names until today. Do you love the smell of rain, that clean, greenish aroma when raindrops hit dry ground? That's petrichor, from the Greek petra, meaning stone, and ichor, meaning the blood of the gods and goddesses. The term was coined by two Australian researchers in 1964 and really became a word in 2011 when it popped up in a Doctor Who episode. Hey there, TARDIS. When I get that itching and tingling sensation that means my foot's asleep, Paresthesia. Decenia means having difficulty getting out of bed in the morning, but in my house we call that Monday, and also other days. Doctors are notorious for griffonage, or illegible handwriting. The area between your shoulder blades that you can never scratch is called the acnestis. Palindromes are words or phrases that read the same way forward or backward, like mom, or taco cat, or the sentence Marge lets Nora see Sharon's telegram. But a samordnolap reads one way forward, stressed, and another way backward. Desserts. Other examples include diaper, parts, and of course, some more no app itself. Half thongs are silent letters in words like knife or fight or Django. This might be something that you already canoe. By the way, never forget, six miles of canoeing, one micromort. If your house has a neatly manicured front lawn and an overgrown mess in the back, you've got yourself a lawn mullet. That's not really a word, but we're into it. Your Google ganger is the person with your name who shows up in Google search results when you Google yourself. Like, for me, there is a John Green who is known as one of the four horsemen of Sasquatchery. Then there's John Green the realtor who has johngreen.com, my mortal enemy, and of course, John Green with the mustache. Fans of the television program Phineas and Ferb, which is to say humans, all know that those plastic or metal things at the end of shoelaces are called aglets. But you might not know that the metal thing that holds your eraser to the end of your pencil is called a ferrule. Not the wild cat kind, obviously. When you're playing chess and every possible move is to your disadvantage, the situation is called a zugzwang, which by the way also happens sometimes when you're playing Connect Four. Zombie Fairy's in a bit of a zugzwang right now, because if she goes over here, she's gonna get attacked by Trollface, over here by a pirate, and up here a bunch of dogs. Scroop is the rustling, swooshy sound that ball gowns make. More generally, it's the sound produced by the movement of silk. That thing you use to dot a lowercase letter I is called a tittle. The plastic table-like item found in the middle of a pizza box is called a box tent and was patented in 1983. Pro tip, most people in the biz now call it a pizza saver. How do I know so much about pizza? You've gotta have a Ford in this world. Gummerspeck is a German word that refers to excess weight gained from emotional overeating. Its literal translation? Grief bacon. That's another 25 cents toward the staff pork chop party. If you're packing on the Coomer spec, you might be feeling crapulous, though it sounds like a word invented by a middle schooler in the 1990s. Crapulous dates back to the 1530s when it was used to describe that gross, nauseated feeling that you get from eating or drinking too much. The small triangular bump on the inside corner of each eye is called the caruncula. The depressed area of skin under your nose and above your upper lip is called the philtrum, and nitic is the technical term for the nape of your neck. Obsessive nose picking is called rhinotelexamania. Pelidophobia is the fear of bald people. It is most frequently suffered by balding people. Don't worry, James Madison. You die before you go bald. Pantherophobia is the fear of your mother-in-law, which I don't have. I would tell you if I did. I don't. I promise. I don't. No. What are you talking about? I do not. I, no. No. She's awesome. She really is awesome, actually. And arachibutyrophobia is a real mouthful of a word that means the fear of peanut butter sticking to the roof of the mouth. Scandinavery means deceit or trickery by Scandinavians. Like so many great 20th century words, we have James Joyce to thank for that one, and of course, the deceitful Scandinavians. The indent on the bottom of a wine bottle is called a punt. And a graph is the wire cage that keeps the cork in a bottle of champagne. Barm is the foam on a beer. Encounter too many punts, graphs, and barms in one night, and you'll have the zings, or a peppy name for a hangover. Some people have started calling the cardboard sleeve that comes wrapped around your coffee a zarf. I'm now going to be one of those people. The string of typographical symbols that comic strips use to indicate profanity is called a grawlix. <laughs> yeah, it is. What are you gonna do about that, Mark? Oh, just bleep it? A word that can be its own antonym is called a contronym. For example, cleave can mean to sever or to cling. What's that? You need four more examples? 
I will provide some. Off means deactivated, as in to turn off, but it also means activated, as in the alarm went off. Weather can mean to withstand or come safely through, or it can mean to be worn away. If you seed your lawn, you add seeds, but if you seed a tomato, you remove them, and left can mean either remaining or departed. When you're outside on a cold day and you can feel the warmth of the sun, you're experiencing a moment of apricity. A compulsive book thief or hoarder is a biblioclept. Thomas Edison had five dots, like the ones you see on dice, tattooed on his left forearm. This pattern is properly, although almost never, referred to as a quincunx. It is now gang-affiliated, making Tommy Edison an OG. You probably already know the meaning of schadenfreude, but another super-specific German word, vorfreude, describes a kinder, less terrible feeling. The joy you feel when thinking about good things that will happen. A person known by one name, like Adele, or Moby, or Voltaire, or Madonna, is mononymous. By the way, just for the record, Adele, Lori, Blue, Adkins, Richard, Melville, Hall, Francois, Marie, Arouette, and Madonna. It's just Madonna. And let's run out the clock today with some old-timey collective nouns from Jane Lipton's wonderful book, An Exaltation of Larks. A group of ponies is called a string. An assembly of ferrets is a business, and it is very serious business indeed. A group of jellyfish? That would be a smack. It's a gam of whales, or you might have a murder of crows, or an unkindness of ravens. Three or more goats, and you've got yourself a trip. Three or more goats yelling like humans, and you've got yourself a short-lived internet meme. Many owls form a parliament, and you might think that a group of donkeys is an assload, but you'd be wrong. It's a pass of asses. Thanks for watching Mental Floss here on YouTube, which is brought to you with the help of these nice people. Every week we answer a mind-blowing question from the comments. Many, many people have asked what my two favorite heavy metal bands are. I'm not going to tell you. I would tell you, but then I would have to Iron Maiden you. Remember, Metal Floss isn't just a YouTube channel, it's also a real live magazine, and there's an amazing online store where you can get anything for 15% off if you enter the code YouTubeFlossers. Also, submit your amazing questions to comments, and I will answer as many of them as I can. Thanks again for watching, and DFTBA.